So now we're going to continue looking at different types of sensory input behavior in animals. And let's just recall that sensory input is simply when a stimulus triggers a simple or complex set of behaviors. We'll go right into our next idea of sensory input by looking at something called behavioral rhythms. So this is another type of sensory input, and we'll entitle this behavioral rhythms. And so previously I mentioned the idea of circadian rhythms, and we're going to elaborate on that. Those are, that is a part of the behavioral rhythms uh, that many animals exhibit. And behavioral rhythms are all due to a stimulus. Specifically, behavioral rhythms are rhythms that occur at regular intervals. So we'll say um, occur at regular intervals intervals so there is a pattern to these behaviors and this pattern occurs at a regular predictable interval that we can easily observe. For example we can understand behavioral rhythms by looking at something called circadian rhythms. And This is a term you've probably heard many times before but we're really going to elaborate this and understand its purpose in the animal behavior sense of the term. So circadian rhythms, what are these? Circadian rhythms are those rhythms that occur over the course of a day. So we'll say they are over course, over course, let me write that, course of one day. So these occur th all throughout the day, those are called circadian rhythms. And sometimes people understand circadian rhythms by understanding the fact that the activity varies based on what type of rhythm you're on. What I mean by this is that the behavior itself, the complex or simple behavior and the behavioral rhythm in a sense, varies depending on whether or not you're, let's say, diurnal, whether or not, let's say, you're nocturnal. You've definitely heard of that one probably nocturnal, oh, let me rewrite that one, diurnal, and this one would be nocturnal, and then another one is a different type of activity variation that could be called crepuscular, crepuscular. So what do these mean? What do I mean by activity varies? Well, what we understand about diurnal, nocturnal, and crespicular species is the fact that their rhythms vary over the course of a day, and thus, if they are diurnal in terms of their circadian rhythm, they are going to be active during the day. So we'll say active, active in day. So these guys who are diurnal, much like humans, let's say, humans are diurnal species. They are active during the day. Nocturnal is something you definitely probably already know. These are those individuals, those animals that are active. And when are they active? They are active at night. So I'm just trying to squeeze this in on the bottom. Active at night. And then crepuscular species are those that are active at dawn and dusk. So they're like the in-between active at dawn slash dusk. So the example for nocturnal could be like a, a raccoon, um, a crepuscular species are usually small rodent mammals um, like mice are crepuscular. They're active uh, during dawn and dusk. And this is all due to their circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm itself is based off of a couple of things. We still haven't figured out the stimulus that causes this variation in activity, thus this variation in behavior of diurnal, nocturnal, and crepuscular species. So why over the course of the day do we have some that are active in the day, some active at night, and some active at dawn and dusk? Well, we can ask two main questions, just like any animal behaviorist would do. We can ask ourselves, what are the proximate causes? What are the hows of this equation, of this scenario? What are the prox causes? We can understand proximate causes by looking at both the external and internal environments, meaning that we can look at exogenous. Exogenous just means external. We can just look at exogenous factors, and the major exogenous factor of figuring out whether or not you're active in the day, night, or dawn and dusk is what? It's, of course, light, the sun, or light intensity, let's say. 
because those who are active at night prefer little to no light intensity. Those who are active in the day prefer tons of light intensity. And then we have the middle guys here in the crepuscular species. So exogenous, which is external proximate cause, is going to be our light intensity. The opposite of exogenous would be endogenous. So endogenous, this is internal proximate causes internally in animals that behave underneath a circadian rhythm that acts over the course of the day, these are going to rely on physiological measures. There are going to be certain things that are going to work the best at night, certain physiological processes, and certain physiological processes are going to work better during the day. In a sense, those animals who are diurnal and utilize light probably utilize vision a lot. Thus, their physiological measure is the fact that eyesight requires light. And thus, they will use the physiological measure of eyesight combined with the exogenous measure of light intensity, both proximate near causes to allow them to act as a diurnal species, amongst many other exogenous and endogenous causes. So that's our exogenous, endogenous, proximate causes. So that's our how. How does it happen? How it happens is because of light intensity or because of how the eyes actually work, let's say in a diurnal species. What are the ultimate causes then? What are the why? to this uh, idea of um, circadian rhythm. So let's write ultimate causes, U-L-T for ultimate causes. This is what behaviorists are really, really looking after, and this is what's sometimes harder to figure out than just the proximate causes, because we have to look at the evolutionary outcome. Why is it evolutionary beneficial to be diurnal versus nocturnal versus crepuscular based off of the species in hand? Well, most people would consider the fact that there's going to be food availability. Food will play a big, big role in ultimate causes of many animal behaviors because food is what's going to allow for survival, and survival will then encompass reproduction, hopefully. And if food is mostly available at best when a species works during the day because of their ability to use their eyes due to the sunlight, then of course they will have food availability best seen during the day. For nocturnal species, those that have eyes that are adapted and physiologically good for the night, those species are not going to look at the availability of food during the day. They're only going to focus their efforts on that food that is definitely available at night, aka a raccoon is going to attack our garbage cans as human species because we go away at night and they become active during the night and thus they will notice there's some sort of food availability that has just popped up because of the lack of a diurnal species like us humans. So that's an ultimate cause for a very annoying raccoon behavior. Nonetheless, of course, always tied back to ultimate causation. In addition, you can also say that there are no predators at the point at which these animals uh, act and uh, do their thing. There are no predators usually that are um, going to bother the diurnal species uh, during the day. And I think more so even for the nocturnal species, since these are a little bit rarer, those diurnal species, the ones that act on, let's say, eyesight and the ability to see things, they will not do well at, against these nocturnal species because these nocturnal species are so good at seeing at night, so good at having they literally have night vision and those that are active during the day of course will not be successful at trying to let's say eat their nocturnal counterparts for lack of a better phrase so there might be no predators during the time that there's active active um, uh, activity and lastly maybe the time uh, that is utilized, maybe that's the best time for breeding for the species. So look at all these things. All of these things are all about survival. These two are survival and reproduction. Always ultimate cause is about what evolutionarily will work. So those are circadian rhythms. They occur over the course of one day. There are actually other behavioral rhythms that we can call circannual rhythms. So circ annual rhythms. And we all know what annual means and this is exactly what we're referring to. We're looking at rhythms that occur 
over the course of one year, a yearly basis. So these rhythms, these circ annual rhythms, will be on a yearly basis. You might already know some of these that are observed in animals. Over the course of a year, or in a one time a year, you might see, let's say, migration of organisms. There's one migratory event. Maybe you'll see the fact that there's only one breeding time that a certain species has, and that's one year. It's a yearly basis. Then maybe you'll also see um, something like a hibernation, and hibernation will be seen once, once a year. So we have these three examples of a circ annual rhythm. And again, we have to, as a behaviorist, as an animal behaviorist, studying the ecology of animal behavior, we have to ask ourselves, how or why does this happen? And we can really focus our efforts in this situation on the proximate causes, specifically, um, uh, which are the following. How does this happen? Well, this is because of exogenous cues, external cues, and it's always in reference to things like day length. So those who migrate, let's say, will notice that days are getting shorter. There's getting less and less light, and thus it is time for us to migrate to places in which there will be more and more light, aka going from the north to the south. Same thing with hibernation. I'm noticing that there is less and less light. It must mean that winter is coming. It must mean that I must undergo my circ annual uh, rhythm of hibernation. And one more time, let's go back to the beginning. A stimulus triggers a simple or complex behavior. All of these behaviors we've uh, established right now, I would consider them rather complex. The ability to either choose whether or not you're diurnal, nocturnal, or crepuscular are very complex set of behaviors, all due to the fact that there are going to be uh, stimuli affecting the circadian rhythm, stimuli affecting the circ annual rhythm. A lot of the times light is a big, big component that we've noticed in both of these as representing a stimulus that triggers the behavior. And that concludes our discussion on behavioral rhythms.